Welcome back. I'm Barry Craig. At least twice in Kentucky history, candidates for governor have made gambling an issue. Come election day, November the 6th, Governor Ernie Fletcher hopes that this issue will carry him to victory and a second term. With me today to discuss the governor's race and gambling are two gentlemen who, uh, who know quite a bit about Kentucky history and politics. They are Gerald Watkins, professor of political science here at the college, Thank you. and Dr. Dave Krieger, retired professor of history from the college. I thought you were going to say who know a lot about gambling. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, Gerald, briefly, if you would, outline the position of Governor Fletcher and, and uh, Steve Bashir, the challenger in this, in this election okay, on sure. gambling. Sure, Professor Craig. Uh, this seems to be, at least right now, the central issue in the campaign between the two uh, nominees. Uh, Governor Ernie Fletcher, the incumbent uh, for four years, has said that he personally opposed expansion of gaming in Kentucky, but would not stand in the way nor voice any opposition if the General Assembly wanted to pass it and put it on the ballot as an amendment uh, and just let the people decide. But A he, constitutional amendment. Right. Constitution, mm -hmm. We have to amend the Constitution to do, expand uh, casino gambling in Kentucky. And, but he uh, modified his position last week in a debate, and uh, he is now saying he will oppose and fight any attempt to uh, push that through the General Assembly and put it on the ballot. So he's really coming out staunchly opposed to the expansion of gambling and willing to fight to prevent that from happening. On the other hand, Steve Bashir, the Democratic nominee, has long uh, voiced strong support for it to show leadership and try to push it through the General Assembly and get it on the ballot and, and uh, campaign for it. Uh, he looks at it as uh, necessary uh, revenue, additional revenue to improve uh, certain aspects of the budget in Kentucky. And, uh, uh, but he's uh, kind of seemingly in the same debate backing off just a little bit and, and he's saying, well, uh, whether it passes or not, we're going to improve uh, different programs in Kentucky and it's not going to be the, the major plank of any improvement in his uh, 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 plat platform and budget. Uh, but he uh, certainly is not backing off from voicing strong support for expanded gambling in Kentucky, but with some restrictions, as Dave was saying, at, at all the uh, existing racetracks and then an expansion in, in maybe uh, two to four other locations, I think there are seven racetracks, so it, uh, you're talking probably 10 or 11 locations around the state of Kentucky uh, that uh, if it passes, that Bashir supports would have uh, casino gambling. Mm -hmm. Although the interesting thing so far in this campaign, although we've got a long ways to go, but so far, mm -hmm. is that uh, uh, this debate on gambling seems to be a one-sided debate, at least mm -hmm. on in terms of the television ads you get, the, you know, the, the Fletcher ads, you know, I, I emphasize heavily gambling. Bashir does not. So, so he, he has not even uh, responded uh, to, uh, to Fletcher's uh, uh, campaign against gambling. I think Fletcher sees it as, as a winning issue in that uh, probably if you looked at polls, although I think people are becoming less opposed to it and maybe somewhat more supportive of, but uh, for a number of years here, uh, I think most Kentuckians were highly opposed to the expansion of casino gambling in Kentucky. It hadn't been very many legislative uh, terms uh, back that uh, the, the gambling industry couldn't even find a sponsor in the House and Senate to introduce an expansion of gaming. Uh, now they've advanced to the point where they do have some support. But the Senate president is opposed to it and the House speaker is opposed to it. And so um, I think that would indicate, and in, in with the amount of opposition or lack of support from the other lawmakers, is there's not a lot of support out there among uh, the population, although I think probably that is changing some. And if you can uh, attach it to some needed uh, uh, area of improvement, like education or something, then you can gain public support for it. But I think Fletcher sees it uh, as a winning issue for him. I'm not sure it'll turn out that way, but that's a, he looks at it as a winning issue. So he's really going to hit that hard the entire campaign all the way to November 6. Going back in Kentucky history, 1927, this was an issue in the governor's race. The Democrat John Kreps Wycliffe Beckham was totally opposed to racetrack betting. The Republican, Flem D. Sampson, uh, said it's a legislative matter, and Sampson won. 
1987, and Gerald, we've talked about this, Wallace Wilkinson, as we, we're bearing down on the Democratic primary election day, he grabs the lot as an issue and he wins. He wins the governorship. And you were saying, Dave, the percentage of, of support for the lottery when it was voted on? Uh, 60 percent. Which is a pretty substantial. So you got to wonder, is this really a winning issue hmm. for Fletcher? What do you all think? I think uh, it's an emotional issue. Uh, it's freighted with uh, uh, morality uh, for some people. Uh, it uh, can generate all kinds of human interest stories. Thinking of a headline in a paper which said a woman uh, loses $900,000 gambling when the casinos didn't stop her. Of course, she wasn't from Kentucky either. But uh, uh, you know, you get these human interest stories and you, and you get these anecdotal evidence, which means I saw or I know of a case, and then generalize across the board. And so, so it gener you know, generates these human interest stories. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and that's something people like to latch on to in campaigns. And it's not true today. You can go back to the 1820s or 1800 and find that. Mm -hmm. um, whereas uh, campaigns that focus on such uh, critical issues as education, uh, economic development, social services, health care, those are not exciting topics. Uh, so, so, you know, how, how this plays out remains to be seen. Fletcher has baggage that he's carrying, as do most incumbents. And, you know, that he may not be able to overcome that. Well, or going back, you know, I was going to say, going back in the history of our state, uh, I, I know one of your fields of historical study was the year of Henry Clay. Uh, when Clay ran for president one time, the Democrats said Henry Clay has a personal flag. It is two dueling pistols superimposed over a brandy bottle and a deck of cards. Uh, Clay was a famous card player, was he not? And wasn't that considered sort of a, of a virtue, a card playing politician? You got down there and played cards with the fellows? Yes, uh, Henry Clay uh, indeed did play card, although, cards, although he may well have played uh, uh, an aristocratic version of the game called Whist, the forerunner right. of bridge. But uh, quite frankly, gambling was uh, in various, of various kinds was widespread throughout the colonial period and down into the 1830s and 40s when uh, in a reform-minded period uh, there was an, an, an effort to outlaw gambling. It then flourished for a while in the uh, mid and late 19th century and then, then it was outlawed in the late 19th and early 20th century. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's gone through phases. And can, well, going back to, if I may, Andrew Jackson once said, I have never seen a Kentucky in my life without a gun, a pack of cards, and a bottle of whiskey. <laughs> and I mean, that is anecdotal, but yet when you think of early Kentucky yeah. on that frontier, that, that sort of yeah. mentality. Go ahead, Gerald. Well, going back to the 87 uh, race for governor with Wallace Wilkinson, two weeks before the election, he was in uh, last place, fifth, with 10% in the polls, and looked like had no hope. And uh, of course, uh, benefiting him, the two Front runners John Wild Brown Jr. and uh, Steve Bashir were throwing mud on each mm -hmm. other, and it got pretty nasty. And he grabbed the lottery issue at that point and used a heavy advertising. Uh, but he attached with that the fact that he was going to use uh, the revenue for improvements in education and to give a one-time bonus to Vietnam veterans. So those were issues that really, you know, no one would oppose. Mm -hmm. And he went from uh, fifth place to first place and won by a little over 50,000 votes. And uh, so then he, he did have a mandate. And, and uh, there was some minor opposition, as I recall, uh, uh, concerning uh, the uh, possibility of a lottery. But uh, with 60% uh, majority, that, that's pretty resounding. And uh, it, it may be that in the last uh, 10, 12 years that uh, the attitude of Kentuckians has changed and is a little more, a little more receptive toward that possibility. Uh, of uh, expanding, but uh, probably I think in some people's minds there are degrees of sin, and while a lottery uh, may be a more innocuous sin, casino gambling reaches a higher bracket. So I'm not <laughs> sure if well, Ernie, the governor, can use that. Uh, I think it's going to be kind of a wash as far as those, uh, the more religious we are, and you know, in the Bible Belt, as they say, who will not vote for Steve Bashir because of that, but then on the other hand, there are certainly those who feel like, well, you know, we need more revenue and people are gonna do it anyway. So. And there are also those the Bible Belt who, who would speak against gambling and gamble and speak against drinking and drink. Mm -hmm. So you have that great unknown quantity <laughs> out there as well. Uh, and, and one of the things I, I, that I found really amusing is one of the opponents of casino gambling argued that if we have casino gambling, 
that's less money people will spend on on, on the bingo at, at, at church. And I thought, well, okay. Uh. Yeah. Well, yeah. Something else to keep in mind is that uh, uh, campaigns rarely revolve around one issue. Uh, and it's very early in this campaign. I think other issues probably will surface and and will also play a role in, in the outcome of the well, election. Well, you mentioned the baggage. Uh, yeah. Isn't Fletcher the only Kentucky governor, sitting governor, indicted? Yeah, I think so, and this is kind of a diversion because if we're talking about gambling, we're not talking oh. about... Uh, if, I were, if I were <laughs> Fletcher, I'd be riding this horse to the bitter end, oh, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. And, and the more he brings it up, then of course Bashir has to talk about it too. Right. So then the attention is focused on that rather than on uh, his uh, problems. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's a pretty good campaign tactic. Oh, but I as agree. Dave said, it, you know, how long can you ride that? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah that's, that's another issue. The other, the, the other thing probably will not be discussed uh, about this is that gambling raises very small amounts of money. Um, uh, the Kentucky Lottery uh, uh, pays about, uh, uh, the last figures I saw, about $150, $200 million into the state coffers. That works out to about 1% of state revenue. Uh, it's just a dribble. Um, and a lot of times what happens if you say you're going to dedicate or earmark that money to a specific purpose, education, Okay, you've got 158 million going into education from this particular tax. Therefore, the legislature can take 158 million that's coming from other tax sources out of education and put it elsewhere. So it probably doesn't raise the amount spent on education. Yeah, and other states have, have practiced that too. That you see that history, right? From that. Uh, and, and the indication too right now, with especially here in Kentucky, is that probably about 55 percent of Kentuckians play the lottery. You know, which is in every county in this state, every convenience store just about sells lottery tickets. Um, but of, of those 55% who play the lottery, only about 20% are heavy users of the lottery. And that's where the lottery focuses its, its advertising, is to get these heavy mm -hmm. users to play even more. So you've got a tough sell if you're going to say that, that casino gambling is addictive when a state monopoly, which is what the lottery boils down to, the state lo mm -hmm. lottery is promoting this addiction. Uh, it, 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 it's, a, it's, a, it's quite an irony. Yeah, uh, I think they're projecting that uh, around $1.5 billion would be spent uh, in addition, uh, well, at this expanded gaming and about $500 million, so about a third of it would go to the general fund, about $500 million. Yeah, $500 million works out to about 3% uh, of the general fund, so we're still yes. not no talking magic, about yeah. it's not a it's, it's not a magic wand you know the big the big revenue raisers remain uh, the income tax and the sales tax yeah, yeah. and who's going to raise taxes that's right <laughs> yeah in, in in part what you see i think with with states uh, uh, legalizing gambling is this desperate effort to raise revenue without, without having taxes. to raise taxes yeah, that's right that yeah. fall on the general population you know, most people feel like they're taxed heavy enough at this point and and uh, a lot of middle class and lower class already live paycheck to paycheck and when you start talking about raising taxes i mean that's the death sentence it for is. an elected official these it days is. it could also be argued too that uh that the uh, gambling uh, is in a sense a regressive tax like much of Unfortunately, state and local taxes happen to be regressive. Means that the poorer people pay a higher percentage of the tax. Yeah. Uh, the uh, for every dollar that's put into the uh, uh, lottery, for example, forty cents goes into the state treasury. So it's a forty percent tax on a dollar. And if lower income people are spending more heavily on this, then obviously, as a percentage of their income, they're paying more. Yeah, and as you mentioned tax. earlier, you're not creating uh, uh, wealth, and you're not creating right. jobs. You're not, you're not jobs. right. You're not creating wealth. You're not creating jobs. And even with casinos, you know, you're talking about minimum wage jobs, probably. And yeah, you're not talking about uh, uh, the kinds of uh, wages or salaries that uh, manufacturing plants or high tech industry is going to bring into the state. Mm -hmm. Well, again, it seems to me in framing this argument, it, it's an old argument. It's economics on the one hand and morality on the other. The same argument has been made about alcohol, going back to the colonial time with, with tobacco. King James hated tobacco, but he wouldn't ban it because it made money. Mm. Isn't this basically what we have here, the same sort of issue? Yeah, Attorney General Greg Stumbo, in speaking to the Lions Club, uh, 
uh, a while back uh, framed it as that. He kept saying, look, this is not a morality issue, this is an economic issue, and he was in favor. In fact, he went so far as to say, we don't even have to amend the Constitution to be able to expand gaming, but he's the only one who has that opinion. Everyone else basically agrees that well, you can't do that without amending the Kentucky yeah. Constitution. But he kept saying, this is not a morality issue, this is an economic issue. But I remember a preacher being in the audience looked at me and said, oh, by dang it, it is a morality issue. It's not an to economic issue. To some people issue. it is. Yeah. It's, yeah. Like, it's like alcohol. Yeah, yeah. There, are, there, are, there are certain taxes that are called sin taxes. Right. Taxes on alcohol, tobacco products, uh, gaming. Those are mm -hmm. sin taxes. The, uh, sin taxes. Yeah, not like uh, a sin, sin right, tax. Sin right. tax. <laughs> and um, and the, 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 interesting, the interesting thing, if you're going to use this issue of sin, is that uh, w when uh, the lottery was established, this meant that the state went ahead and established the sin, then turned around and taxed <laughs> the sin. Uh, it, it, it's, it's a curious situation. <laughs> it is. It is. Um, but it, you know, it's, it's, it's funny that in Kentucky, we'll, this will be a major argument because the South is, it goes to, if you look at the numbers, the South goes to church in twice the numbers that any other region of America does. And you can go across the river to Illinois and Indiana and you don't have that type of debate or you didn't have when they established it and, and it's just not an issue. But when you move South, like to Kentucky on, this is a big issue because so many people in Kentucky go to church and you know, to them they think, well, this is gambling, you know. Uh, and how far do we want to go here in, in raising revenue? But I was told by a person whose name I will not call, that this person went and bought a lottery ticket. This is a religious person and was concerned about that. And when this person went to buy the lottery ticket, this person saw deacons from his church there buying lottery tickets. So there you have it. You have to be careful about that, that kind of broad generalization that, that uh, uh, religious people oppose gambling. Uh, it, it's a certain kind of religious right. people. It's, it's usually uh, fundamentalists, and it's usually in rural areas. Now, the attitude towards towards gaming is going to be much much different in urban areas. And when you and go one of the things that makes Kentucky unique is it is not a heavily urbanized right. state. But when you go yeah. behind that curtain, no one knows. And you can uh, you, it, we all have seen instances of people getting up there saying, "I'm for this. I'm for this," and then go the other way behind that. That's what's going to be interesting. And polls yeah. won't address this. I don't think polls can yeah. address this issue. Yeah. Um, so uh, any, uh, anyway, continue. You're about to say something. I think that interrupt you. Uh, I think I finished. A politician. It's interesting. The uh, <laughs> uh, horse racing industry in the state has come out in strong support of Steve Bashir because uh, betting at horse ra uh, tracks has fallen on hard times these days. There are more interesting ways of, of betting your money. Uh, you can do this online now. Oh, yes. yeah. uh, and, and, and racetracks uh, are, are looking for a way to generate income and, and keep people coming in. Yeah. And one way to do that is to establish casinos. Yeah, so and, and so the horse uh, racing industry is in favor of, of casinos, mm -hmm. casino mm -hmm. gambling on their premises, of course. Mm -hmm. yeah. And, and they have the support of a former governor, uh, uh, Brereton Jones. Who's who, a horse racer. Well, that's yeah. right, yeah. 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 Uh, and again, you talk about horse racing. You think, and, and I have said this as a joke many times in my Kentucky history classes, the economy of this state, this Bible Belt state, is rooted in vice. Gambling on horses, cigarettes, and liquor. And that's a, that is a tremendous irony to me. You go anywhere in the world today, you say you're from Kentucky, bourbon whiskey. The Kentucky mm -hmm. Derby, as the English say. When you think of tobacco, this is one of the. This is what one of the things that fascinates you about our state is is you have this very religious population, but yet these these sinful. Yeah, things. we're the third largest tobacco producing ta state in the union, and I think the number one producing bourbon. State Sixty-six in the union. percent of all distilled spirit in America is manufactured in Kentucky. Wow. And as I tell students, I said, now you, you go to these horse tracks, you just watch the ponies run. No, you're there to bet on those ponies. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think for most people, horse racing is not interesting unless uh, you you are a bet on the race and, and have a vested interest in a particular uh, mm -hmm. horse and jockey out there. You know, I, th I think there are degrees of sin, and we justify things in our own mind, and none of us are perfect. And, and you know, life is you have all these choices. And and I remember going on a uh, trip to uh, California, in a, a major city, and and. Uh, we were uh, with, it was a religious group and we were talking to people 
uh, about faith <coughs> and uh, many people we talked to were drug dealers standing on the corners. And, and I talked to the pastor of the church we were with. I said, I, I don't get it, you know. Uh, and, and he said, oh, well, you know, in this community, if people aren't killing someone, we feel pretty good about ourselves. So, uh, uh, you know, dealing drugs, that's just a way to make money. <laughs> Uh, so maybe gambling, you know, we, we are people of faith, but uh, we have degrees of sin, and maybe if we aren't doing something worse, well, you know, what's the harm in, in spending a little money uh, to gamble on? on as, you know. Now, if you were, obviously, I think we're all in agreement. If we were campaign gurus for, for Governor Fletcher, we would say ride this gambling to the end. If you're Steve Bashir, on the other hand, what do you do to... to Diffuse this message. What would you all do? Well, he. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. Well, I was just going to say he's he's going to he needs to find some other issues to talk about. He's letting Ernie Fletcher set the agenda for the campaign, and he's he's kind of playing defense because Ernie feels like rightly or wrongly he feels like he's on the right track and he's got a winning issue, and, and it's deflecting you but, know but the criticism. It, it amazes but, me. Wouldn't you think Bashir would really be hammering on corruption? On on, on yeah, the, he the, needs to take control the, of the, the agenda. merit system scandal. Yeah. The, the indictment. Those kinds of issues that uh, revolve around corruption unfortunately tend to be complex as far as the average voter is concerned. You've got indictments, you've got grand juries, you've got judges issuing decisions, you've got the attorney general involved, and the issues become complicated. Uh, most people probably didn't follow all of that. Uh, and, and didn't have any, any sense of the context of how that fit into uh, the attacks on the state merit system. Uh, people didn't follow that. Um, campaigns generally revolve around uh, taking complex issues and making them very simple. And today they become even, have to become even simpler because they have to fit into sound bites. And you know, Steve Bashir right now is trying to, to exude the, the image that he is above the fray and that he will accept the ideas he doesn't, as he said, he doesn't care where they come from, Republicans or Democrats. Mm -hmm. Well, I don't think that's something that's going to resonate in the state. And so no. I, I think Gerald's right. He's got to find a, mm -hmm. a, a, a more emotional issue because unfortunately that's what that's what resonates. Well, with it, it, as someone, oh, I've seen this more than one place, that in Kentucky and states like Kentucky, elections uh, oftentimes revolve around the three G's, God, guns, and gays. And now we've added gambling. So there's a fourth G. These are hot button, emotional, social issues. Um, you know, much as if you want to go back to Henry Clay again, uh, you know, I think of the... Uh, uh, the elections in which he was involved in. He was going to issue these long papers and long discussions about the protective tariff, right. the Bank of the United States. The American system. And the, right. Ameri the so-called American system. And the average voter, you know, by then, you know, eyes would glaze over. <laughs> um, you know, uh, 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 killing British at New Orleans made a whole, made a lot of difference for Andrew Jackson. And sure. Clay never did get the fact that that kind right. of emotional, emotional issue resonated with voters. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you, you have mm -hmm. to find, give people reason to vote for you. And, and uh, uh, I just think right now, uh, Fletcher kind of is, uh, has the advantage in, in setting the, the rhetoric for the campaign and Bashir needs to grab something in the area of education or health care or crime and punishment or something, job creation, uh, the economy uh, that grabs the people's attention and, and gives them a reason to vote for him. They, they, won't, they won't change. I mean, he wants the voters to want change or, or he doesn't have a chance but to But having said all this, in, in all fairness, as, 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 as of today, Bashir is way ahead in the polls. He's got a double-digit lead in every one of them. Yeah. So now I don't know, could gambling move that deficit from double digits? I mean, could he close the gap? I, I guess. Well, you know, it could be that the, we, we, call, we call these issues gambling, liquor, uh, personal morality, should it be regulated or not? Uh, mm -hmm. uh, those are what we call cultural issues. Mm -hmm. And we may have run the gamut in this country on those issues. And the only one left right now is gambling because mm -hmm. Steve Bashir, you know, has seemed 
to favor it. You yeah. know, but the but these other issues like you know, uh, uh, you know what? How do you define marriage? Uh, uh, should gays receive uh, uh, their partners receive uh, receive be part of the uh, uh, benefit packages of various institutions and so on? That that may have run its course apparently, and, and so the only one left right now is gambling. So it is the new G. Yeah, I think I think the race is going to tighten up. But uh, yeah, on those other issues, I think the voters have realized that one party doesn't have a monopoly on morality. And if you look at some of the things that are happening around the country, and and where you got one group of people uh, blasting another group for a, a lack of morality, and then you see the failures, you know, that people are beginning to realize, well, hey, you know. Uh, everybody's susceptible to failure and no one has a monopoly on it so let's let's vote for the best person that has the best ideas. That brings up an interesting point is the scandal involving uh, Senator Larry Craig from Idaho he is no relation to me by the way my dad's from East <laughs> Tennessee I want that to be made. Will that have an effect indirectly on the Kentucky election? I think it could. Um, the issues to me uh, uh, favor the Democrats, uh, local, state, and national. I think that's one reason that mm -hmm. Bashir is 20 points up right now. And, and I think it's the Democrats to lose top to bottom, basically, uh, even the presidential election. Uh, uh, and so those issues that uh, the Republicans usually win on, which you just mentioned, uh, I don't think they can, uh, can win on them this time around because you, if you look at issues like uh, or uh, incidents like Senator Craig's you know how can you get up there as a party and say and blast uh, people for those type sins when you look in your own uh, house. <laughs> I was going to say restroom stall. But yeah. <laughs> you know, one, one, one issue I, that I was thinking that has not surfaced yet in this race I don't know if it will or not it's a hot button issue it's very emotional is immigration. Yeah. Uh, right. but, but it has not surfaced, and I'm not certain why. Uh, if, it, if it's that uh, there are the number of, of uh, and, and I don't think it has to be tied to the number of immigrants in the state. We have a very low uh, Hispanic mm -hmm. population in Kentucky, although if you mm -hmm. talk to uh, native Kentuckians, you would not get that Well, historically, I mean, it, the, the, the great the wave of immigration right, didn't wash passed, over Kentucky, did by it? Kentucky, well, and the South. Yeah, the South, right. But, uh, you know, that's been a hot button issue yeah. for discussion, but it has not, not come up in this campaign You're right. yet. Yeah, and, that, and again, it may be because it's too early, I don't know. Mm -hmm. It's one of the top three issues in the presidential campaign and, and could very well determine the election next year. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, you would think that that would be a, a major issue in Kentucky, too, and maybe it will before it's over mm -hmm. with. Mm -hmm. Well, speaking of over with, we're, we're out of time. Uh, thank you all for coming in. And let's do this again real soon. Maybe down, down the road a few weeks, we'll come back and see if uh, how this thing turns out, if another issue does surface, or if we're going to, if we're going to gamble on gambling to the very end. Uh, <laughs> I'm Barry Craig. Thank you for joining us. My guests today were Dr. Dave Krieger and Gerald Watkins. Please join us next time. Thanks. Thank you.